Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Press Plate Lifestyle Inspired Podcast, where we do interviews with interesting and informative people like our new friend here, Professor Pete, to help our listeners, that's you, find the resources, tools, and support that they need to be their best inspired selves. How are you doing today, Professor Pete? Jackie, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on the show. Of course. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Um, I know it's a little later on your side of the States right now, so I appreciate you joining us in the afternoon. Hopefully you still have energy to, you know, work Absolutely. With us. Yeah. I, 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 anytime I get a chance to talk about this topic, uh, I have a lot of energy around it. Oh, wonderful. So Professor Pete, would you just take a couple of minutes, if you wouldn't mind, to introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Again, my name's Professor Pete Alexander. Um, and for the elevator pitch, I guess, is uh, I help uh, professionals overcome their self-imposed barriers to success through team webinars and individual sessions. So when clients work with me, they tell me that they or their teams are dealing with high stress on the job, often getting physical ailments and working with me, they go from being overwhelmed to full of life. Well, you should have everyone signing up with you, right? <laughs> you would think, you would think, especially nowadays. Yeah, I can't even imagine why you don't have like 800 people knocking your door now. Maybe you do. I don't even know that. Perhaps you do. <laughs> oh, there it goes again. <laughs> yeah, there it goes again. Like ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's A, it's a beautiful topic and timely. It's always timely. But how do you get here from like a kid that decides he likes to ride his bike to the guy that's, you know, studying stress and how it affects them. It's like, what's that path look like from there to here? Oh, wow. Well, if you go back to being a kid, my goodness, uh, as we were talking about at the beginning, um, you know, my, my relationship with stress goes back when I was a really small kid because um, there was a ton of family dysfunction uh, growing up. And I used to like to uh, uh, joke with, uh, with people that my parents combined had nine marriages, seven divorces, and one widowing. So that included a Liz Taylor, Richard Burton thing of marrying and divorcing each other twice. And the, but the really unique thing about that was that my sister was born from the first marriage my, and I was born from the second marriage. So we're 100% we're siblings, but from two different marriages. So I haven't been able to find anybody else who can lay claim to that. Um, and it just, you know, this dysfunction just went over and over and over again as I was growing up. And I basically had to be the parent, even though I was, you know, 10, 9, 8, 13, 15. It was ridiculous. Um, and then as I transitioned to my adult life and working life, I continued to stress myself out until uh, 2008 came around. And it was one of those perfect storms of stress where you get emotionally and physically exhausted and things like I had my dad dying my mom had uh, hip surgery and needed care um, my kids were really small wanted my attention I had a small business I had to run with several employees and uh, oh yeah my uh, marriage was heading for a divorce so just a few things on the shoulders mm -hmm. and there I go getting stress-induced diabetes and yet did I you know, listen to my body about what stress was doing to it? No, no. Instead, I continued to burn the candle uh, for 10 more years, you know, at both ends, until I ended up in the emergency room and later in the ICU with a severe case of diabetic ketoacidosis. And for your listeners, um, that basically meant that my body was eating itself alive because of my stress. And even then, it still didn't hit me until mm -hmm. the second day in ICU. When, and I'd never been in ICU before. I'd been in emergency room with sports-related injuries or the kids got hurt. But ICU, never. And there I was on the second day. And my boss at the time knew I was there. And I get this text at about 6 a.m. on my second day in ICU. And it says, you have a webinar you need to run at 8 o'clock. What are you going to do about it? And I only had my iPhone. I amazingly did not have my work laptop in the ICU. So I just started pushing the envelope as fast as I could to try and reschedule this webinar. Well, 
when I had been admitted into the ER, my blood sugars were so high that the medical grade uh, glucometers could not even read it. It just said high. So that meant that my blood sugars were over 800. Oh. Normal is 80 to 100. So think about it, eight to 10 times higher than it was supposed to be. Finally, on the second day, things came down into a more reasonable level. And then there I was sitting with my iPhone trying to reschedule that webinar. And it was a, a 90 degree angle of my uh, glucose numbers shooting back up. And the nurse at the time who took my uh, readings just said to me, you realize that's what put you in this bed in the first place. And that was my aha epiphany moment. It was like, what am I doing to myself? I've been doing this not just for the last 10 years. I've been doing this for my lifetime because it's just the perfectionist in me, everything in me, drive, 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 because I always wanted to get better. And I was killing myself. And I realized either I better change now or I'm not going to be around to meet my future grandchildren. It's just a simple fact. And so I decided at that point, I got out of the ICU the next day. I resigned the day after that. Fortunately, I had uh, managed my money reasonably well so that I could do that. Uh, and then I, I started applying all these different stress relief tools and techniques that I could find out about. And as I applied those, not only did my stress go down, but my weight went down, my uh, glucose numbers went down, and my energy went way, way, way up. It was as if I had uh, you know, discovered the fountain of youth. And so I had my friends and peers saying, oh my gosh, you know, you should write a book about this because we want that. And so I thought, okay, and I decided to write the book and uh, it was successful and I'm grateful for that and being able to, uh, you know, get that word out about what you can do. And what's fun is, is that, you know, the real world is we don't have the time to read a 300 page book on meditation, let's say. I mean, meditation is fantastic, but who has the time to spend either on an audio book or reading a book for that long uh, of a topic? This is for the rest of us who are going into that difficult conversation, meeting, five minutes, you know, presentation, whatever it happens to be, and you need something to try and calm you down. And it takes a couple of minutes, give it a try. If it works, fantastic. Use it over and over again. If it doesn't work, try something else. And that, it's, that's, that's what's resonated with the audience. I love it. Um, unfortunately, I feel like I'm your female version of Professor Pete. Um, except for without the PhD, but um, I had 21 step siblings. Oh my um, gosh! My mom was married uh, four, five times, but twice to the same person. Mm. Um, I have my dad and my stepdad had a heart attack in the same time, within a week. Right? I lost my job. I delivered my fourth child texting work mm -hmm. between contractions, mm -hmm. and was given a diagnosis of autism for my third child. <sighs> lost my job and both my dogs died in like a two week period. And I got fired from my job two weeks before Christmas. And oh, I'm um, so sorry. It was in 2013. So it's good where, you know, me here, yep. but, um, and I think people for, re unless you are the guy, right. Trying to reschedule or do a webinar in ICU or the gal texting between contractions and go, what in the hell am I doing here? Uh -huh. um, I, we take, and now maybe now in these times, maybe it's a good reminder, but we, we take advantage of our health. We take advantage of, yeah. we, and we work and we work and we work, but I think we forget what we're working for. Absolutely. And it's, it's a really insightful thing that you mentioned because I discovered this uh, firsthand back in the early 90s. So I was working for a management consulting company and the product they had was to align personal values with uh, an, or, an organization and the employees who worked for it with the theory being that if you align your personal values with your work, you'll be happier, you'll be more motivated, loyal, more productive, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. Well, what the interesting thing is, is you identify your top five values. And back in 1990, my top five values did not include personal health. 
And I can tell you right now, regardless of area of my life, personal health is number one now. Because the reality is, if you don't have your health, nothing else matters. And if you don't believe me, I mean, I'm sure, you know, you think about it, Jackie, the last time you were really sick, did you feel like doing anything other than lying in bed? Probably not. And so you're no good to your kids, you're no good to your significant other, you're no good to your job, and you're certainly no good to yourself. Yeah, exactly. And I, I hope that, uh, and part of doing the podcast, and I'm sure part of you writing the book is, um, I want other people to maybe not have to go through it themselves to make, make yeah. a decision to do something differently. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's scary because when you ignore your health, like I did, and you sounds like you you did as well. But when so I when I was admitted into the ER, the doctors told me I was one hour from being comatose. I was so dehydrated, and they thought I was having a heart attack until they ran the numbers and could see that it was the ketoacidosis. But my story, your story, is not unique. Um, uh, you know, I remember um, uh, seeing my friend Ken, who he he and I were friends from high school. And we were each other's best man at our weddings. We supported each other as proud fathers. And then fast forward 30 years, and he was struggling in both his personal and professional life. He too ended up in the emergency room because he was ignoring his health. Turns out he had intestinal cancer and the doctors had to remove over two thirds of his intestines and then he had to undergo chemotherapy. And in between chemotherapy sessions, when he would get his energy back, I would, you know, either call him or we'd get together in person. And Ken would tell me he was absolutely convinced that stress caused his cancer. And two weeks before his 49th birthday, he passed away because of his disease. And because mm -hmm. all the chemo that he was taking, he didn't have anything to uh, fight off the pneumonia he caught. And if you look at it from a medical standpoint, um, there's not, a doctor is not gonna say that there's a direct correlation between stress and a chronic disease such as diabetes or cancer or heart disease. What the, uh, the mitigating factor is cellular inflammation. When we're stressed, we get cellular inflammation inside our body. And cellular inflammation is the kiss of death. That's what puts our body under attack and causes these chronic diseases. And when, you know, our bodies, even though we're in, you know, this, the, the 21st century, our bodies are still wired like they were in the Stone Age. And back then, when we were stressed, it was because we were trying to outrun a T-Rex, a saber-toothed tiger. Um, you know, the classic, I'm sure your listeners have heard of the um, fight-flight uh, syndrome. Well, you get a quick burst of adrenaline, cortisol in your body to help you deal with that situation. Or, you know, we've heard the stories of a parent being able to lift a car to help their kid. Yeah, that's that short burst of, of, of adrenaline. But the problem is now is that so much, the vast majority of our stress is mental. And so what happens is our mind has all this power over our body and we just keep firing off the cortisol, the adrenaline into our body over and over and over again unnecessarily. And that's what breaks us down. Yeah. What do you think is um, the cause of so much of that. So I, I, we all, I don't know, like we all, but many of us, I use a saber tooth tiger for every example I have. I don't know mm -hmm. why. I just probably have a cartoon version of this tiger in my head, but, um, and we've kind of heard the fight, flight, or flee. But I think what's interesting is if you're worried about the tiger getting you and then the tiger goes away, right? Like you stop being freaked out and you're like the blood goes back to your arms and legs right you know you're not run you don't need to be able to run fast or any of that but now we're responding like we would for a tiger because we have to talk in front of a room full of people at work or yeah. our kids school might call or 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 when does the stress like get to release back like if the tiger went away i mean or is that the problem there isn't a 
a signal to us saying, hey, wait, we're okay now? Well, it's a very good question. The problem is the fact that we're an always on uh, society now. Before, if you think about it, let's say, you know, 20 years ago or eh, 25 years ago, before we had this thing called the internet, what happened was is that there, you know, if you checked out of work, you know, you might be stressed about something at work, but you did, you weren't necessarily going to be checking your email. You weren't going to be checking uh, your texts, etc. And because we're always on this technology overload that we have doesn't allow us to catch our breath. And so the classic example is you're saying, you know, some going in, you know, something at work. Okay. So we're checking our, our messages at work. Some of us, you know, that are workaholics will check our messages in the evenings, on the weekends, on our vacation, because we feel we have to do it. And what happens is, is when we do that, we don't give our mind or our body the opportunity to recharge. And that means you have, in effect, in effect, not stopped working. And then you add to it the personal pressures of something about the kids. You know, oh my gosh, all of a sudden the phone call, again, technology, right. phone call from the, the school or an email. You know, your, your son or daughter didn't, uh, uh, was late or didn't arrive, was marked absent in the first, you know, first period kind of a thing. I mean, I've got, yeah. I've got three kids, so I know that whole, whole scenario. Yeah. And it's like, you, okay, now I got to respond to this as well. And, you know, when we're, we're, we're at work and we're giving a presentation, we're nervous because we're, we have this fear of failure and we don't want to look like we're an imposter. And so one of the great things I like to recommend to, to, to the people I work with is when they're really worried about failing, there's a couple things. One is, um, you know, the definition of fear is really an acronym and it stands for fictional evidence appearing real. We're doing it to ourselves. No one else can stress us out. We can stress ourselves out and we do that. We start worrying about every possible thing and it's ridiculous, but we do it to ourselves. I also like to ask people, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Now think about that, Jackie. Instead of worrying about failing, if you start thinking about, well, what would happen if I didn't fail? All of a sudden, the world of possibility opens up. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, I help, I help them start imagining what would it be like, you know, 30 seconds after you've given that presentation and you get the standing ovation. How great would that feel? Well, you didn't fail, you, you succeeded. And so we set ourselves up for failure because we're worried about it. And when we worry about it, we bring this negative energy with us that attracts other negative energy because our bodies are just bunches of energy. We're water, but we're a lot of energy. And you know, the perfect example of this, um, back when we, you know, we used to commute to, <laughs> to our jobs, classic, okay, you're running late and you got to get to work or you got to get the kids to school or whatever it happens to be. Murphy's Law, are you going to hit every red light on your way? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's like a new stop sign will have popped up on like the other. <laughs> of course. Yeah. It's because you're running late and you're worried about it. However, if you take the different approach, which is you're heading to work and each green light you get, you have, you know, I literally, when I get the green lights or a, there's like, a bridge yes. nearby me, I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Because I want more of that. Yeah. You know, I, and so it's just this energy and this, you know, our, our, the classic line I like to use is our perception is our reality. And it's really true. If we perceive that everything is out there to get us, well, guess what? That energy, it's going, you know, the, the mm -hmm. universe is going to send that to us. But if we believe that things are going to be good, things are going to be good because it's, it's all, about, all about our perception. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, I'm just curious, and I know not all of our listeners will be able to see you, but there, you have a, a banner behind you that says oh. six questions, seven minutes, pure insights. I'm curious if that has anything to do with your, um, your work. 
Um, it does, but it's my podcast that I do with uh, with individuals, and it's it, unlike unlike this one. It's one that gets done in seven minutes or less. So it's designed to get a couple answers, boom, boom, boom. Because as we were talking earlier about the real world of not having a lot of time, and so this is designed. Okay, you got only a couple of minutes. Boom! Here's your insight from this particular business leader. So oh, uh, that's cool. So where yeah. is your podcast? Um, hosted and what's the name of it so people can find it if they're interested. Sure. Thank you for that. Um, so it's the Winning at Business and Life podcast and it can be found on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and iTunes. Awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah, every like um, podcasts are kind of hot right now. So definitely mm-hmm. if people like to listen to them, it's a generational thing too. A lot of millennials really, really dig the podcasting. So if we they can do. share a good resource that helps them, why, you know, why wouldn't we? So yes. It, I'm sorry. It, I, it, it, no I just worries. open it. You know, the, the fun part about the guests that I invite, they're business leaders and they share basically something that they do in their business. So, you know, and it's from all different industries. And then I ask, one of the questions I ask them is, um, tell me about your first job. And most of them talk about their first job as a kid and you see their face light up on camera. It's really great. Yeah. Yeah, we all like th- some of those memories are good ones. I had oh, yeah. a lot. I had a lot. Oh, I had a lot of jobs. Someday, someday. So um, <laughs> before we like before we have to wrap it up, uh, I'm curious, where can people find more information about what you're doing? Where can they find your book? Like, if they want to know more, we want to send them to the right place. So where sure, can they go, thank professor? you. Well, what I would encourage your uh, uh, listeners to do is go to my website, which is PeteAlexander.com. So it's standard spelling. So P-E-T-E-A-L-E-A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R.com. And there's a couple things there. One is the blog. I go ahead and I publish one stress relief tip slash video that takes one to two minutes to to consume uh, every Wednesday. So I encourage them to sign up. I don't spam anybody. So that's one. And then the book is there too. You can uh, uh, order it via Amazon, uh, either in Kindle, print version, or audio. Um, Or I can send it to you directly if you'd like, and I can sign it. So uh, it it works uh, all the ways. And and, um, I'm happy to, to answer questions people inquire with me all the time. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Professor Pete. I really appreciate you taking the time. And I, I'll make sure in our show notes, we have a link to your podcast, a link to your book and a link to your website. So that if anyone who wouldn't be looking for tips on stress release, so hopefully yeah. our listeners are able to find some value in, in some of your resources as well. I hope so too, because that's the reason I'm doing it is because, you know, I, I, uh, I believe everyone can reach their full potential if they can get a handle on their stress. So I encourage people to, to try out a couple tips. It doesn't take long. And if you find one that works, boy, run with it. Yeah. Milk it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. I look forward to staying in touch and you have a great day. Jackie, thank you so much. And I appreciate uh, your time from your listeners as well. You too. Bye.